All right. Welcome to Denali Events. It's very, we're very happy to have you here with us today. Sorry about the technical difficulties. We're getting started a little short. Um, but we are trying a new platform here, an outreach platform, to see if everyone enjoys having these lovely 15-minute chats. If you like it, please feel free to let us know. Today we're going to be, be discussing wildlife encounters with our wildlife technician, Matt King, right here. Um, if you have any questions throughout the talk, please feel free to place them on our Facebook page and we'll address them throughout the entire way. So first off, Matt, it's great to have you here with us. Matt's been here for seven seasons in Denali National Park. He's a lot of experience with our wildlife that we have here. And any wildlife encounters, he's had plenty of his own. Some folks were wondering, Matt, when is the best time of year to come to Denali to see very active wildlife? Well, it's not easy to predict because, I mean, they are wild animals, so you never know when they're exactly going to come around. But it seems like in the spring we have a high number of bears that will come down searching for roots along the river bars. Uh, in the fall they'll be out along the tundra looking for berries. Uh, we have moose that come in late in May and early in June because they end up having their calves in the front of the park. Uh, and then it's just sporadic for just about everything else. You never can tell. Hopefully get lucky and see things. All right. So this time of year, the beginning of summer, definitely a good time to come and see those animals. Most likely, if you're coming to Nala, you're going to see them from the inside of a bus. We have an amazing bus system here. However, if you're feeling very adventurous, you can actually go out and explore this wildness by yourself. So you might encounter those animals as you're outside of that bus. What is the best way to prepare yourself for any wildlife encounters if you're actually exploring the wilderness on foot? First thing, which seems very simplistic, is to avoid animals. So it sounds silly, but it's definitely one of those things where you don't want to approach wildlife. If you see it, you want to keep your distance. Um, for, say, things like wolves, you want to treat them like you would a very large dog. Uh, if they are approaching you, be aggressive with them, trying to chase them off. Moose, one of the few animals you could and should run from. Uh, definitely want to keep your distance from them. And you can zig and zag because they can't move laterally quite as easily as we can. And uh, with bears, uh, you want to keep at least 300 yards from the bears that we have in this park. I know there are different rules for different parks in different areas, but that's what we have here. And um, would you like me to go into how to deal with it if they do get closer or approach already? Or, yeah. yeah. Um, many folks have already questioned us on Facebook what we should have with us while we're out in the wildness um, to make sure that we are traveling safely. Should we bring anything with us to make sure that we can avoid those animal encounters? Or if we do have that animal encounter, that can help us actually make it through safely. Well, one of the first things you want to do when you are hiking around the backcountry is, especially any areas where you don't have uh, good visibility, so you're going over a hill, you're going through thick brush, you want to vocalize, like, be like, hey, bear, how's it going? Like, I'm just walking through the woods. Whatever you want to do in order to let bears and other wildlife know that you're in the area and that you're coming through because you want to avoid surprising animals. Um, now, some people want to use, and this is one thing we had a question about and people talking about, is some people want to use bear bells or cow bells. Now, Tom Smith did a, a study on this a few years ago. He was one of the Alaska biologists, and he was looking at how effective it was. So he strung up a couple of bear bells above a, as a group of bears would come through. And so he'd ring these bells, and then the bears weren't really doing anything or showing any signs. So he's just ringing them to the point where it was about to like rip them out of the tree and just wasn't showing any kind of reaction to it at all. But if you ever called out, or um, like he broke a pencil once just to show like that they were paying attention, they were listening, they weren't just deaf to him. It is one of those things where it's a very melodic tone and it's something they can get used to easily and they'll just kind of tone it out like we would music in the background a lot of different times. So the best thing you can do is to vocalize, use your voice because it is very different from anything you're going to see out there in nature and definitely identifies you as a person. Great to know. Um, so, bear bells, not always the best to have with you. Talking loudly is a great opportunity to make sure those animals know that you're in the area. How about bear spray or any other types of deterrent whenever you have one of those wildlife encounters? So if you do have bear spray, it is highly effective. Uh, for the two species of bears that we have in this park, we have black bears and grizzly bears. It's been found in the field usage to be 90% effective with uh, black bears and 92% effective with grizzlies or brown bears. Um, the thing is, is those few cases where it's not being effective at stopping the bear immediately, um, a lot of times they'll still run off, or if they do make contact, the injuries have been very, very slight, and no hospitalizations have even resulted from any of those usages. Uh, versus, you know, sometimes when people are just out in the backcountry, they're not paying attention as they're walking around, um, 
they don't have bear spray or any other deterrents with them, sometimes they'll end up having a negative encounter and they don't know exactly how to deal with those situations and they can end up getting injured. Uh, but like we we're saying, surprise is the best way to keep from, you know, having any, or surprise is, you're trying to avoid surprising a bear is essentially what you're trying to do. And if you do have an encounter with a bear, uh, there's the two types. There was the black bear and the grizzly. With a black bear, 95% of those um, times where a black bear is approaching you, it is looking at you as a food source. It is being predatory. Um, and you want to fight back. You want to be extremely aggressive. Uh, if you have to, you can pick up a rock or stick or something to help fight it off with. Um, you don't want to move away or run from it. Uh, you want to just stand your ground, be fighting against it. Whereas with the grizzly, if it's coming up to you, um, it, I mean, it could be one of those things where we have a lot of times where people encounter bears in this park, uh, grizzlies out in the tundra, and they're like, oh, a bear is kind of following along us. They could be following along the trail, the road, the river bar. First thing you should do is move out of the way. Just get off into the brush or onto the tundra just a little ways away to see if it still tracks to follow after you. If it does happen to follow after you, um, um, if it does happen to follow after you, then you can stop, stand your ground, and don't let it keep pushing you because that just can encourage a bear sometimes. Um, so having bear spray is definitely a good thing to have with you if you're going out in that wilderness just to help you in case you do encounter a bear along the way. Now, fire alarms, firearms are actually allowed inside of the park. You can have firearms inside of the park. Um, how about using those or having those as an option for bear encounters? Well, as of 2010, you can now have them within all the national parks um, according to what the state laws are. Uh, so for here, you can bring them in. Uh, you should be, consider, though, that if you have a gun, if you discharge it, you could be cited for uh, an illegal discharge within the park. Um, you should also be careful. Like there's, I've run into many people and also had some people from some of the questions mention that when they go out, they carry bear spray, a handgun, and a rifle. Realistically, you should probably be choosing just one because if you are having an encounter, most of the cases it's going to be, if you're doing everything you should be, is going to be a surprise encounter um, if you're unlucky enough for that. And you're only going to have the time to respond with one thing. And so whether it's you using a rifle, a handgun, or bear spray, like you should just have one at the ready and be able to use it. Uh, bear spray is one of the most effective things that you can use, and the chances of you um, injuring yourself or someone else is extremely unlikely. Uh, and if you do happen to get yourself with bear spray, it's unpleasant, but the side effects you know, generally seem to, seem, ah, tend to be short term. Uh, whereas with guns, uh, it's definitely one of those things people need to be extraordinarily well trained when it comes to their usage. Um, and All right. then, so since we've talked about some of the opportunities for perhaps encountering animals, when to see those lovely animals on buses or in person as you're walking around the inside of the park, what to bring with you to make sure that you're being safe, we're going to go to some of our questions we've received from Facebook so far. Talking about bears, we're going to focus on bears here for a moment. So one of the first questions that we've had from our Facebook um, page is, how many bears do we actually have living inside of Denali National Park, both grizzlies and black bears? So for grizzlies, we have approximately 350 on the north side of the range and maybe an equal number on the south side and about 300 black bears that are mostly confined to the east, north side, and west out beyond Wonder Lake along the north side of the range and an equal or greater number along the south side of the range. All right. So we have a lot of grizzlies and black, black bears living here. It's always fun to see them chomping on all those berries in late fall. Now, if you happen to be walking along the inside of the park on the one place where you can have your dogs with you on that park road, what should you do if you encounter a bear with your dogs along with you? Now, if you do happen to have dogs with you and you encounter a bear, um, I mean, the best thing that you can do is bring them right up next to you, actually grab them like under the leash to hold on to them, to keep them close to you. Um, you don't want to like, give them a chance to be able to get away, go towards the animal and bark and get closer and then potentially get scared and run back towards you. Uh, but you're still going to treat it like you would a lot of the other situations. You're going to get into a group, make yourself look bigger. Um, if it is approaching you, you can start, like depending on the distance, you can start trying to move out of the way to see if it's just you know trying to be like us even and just using the easiest way to get around or if it is actually approaching you. And if it is, that's when you want to stand your ground, make sure you are looking big, and be aggressive trying to chase off this animal. Yeah. 
So um, bears have an amazing sense of smell, and it seems like a lot of you guys have realized this as well, because one of our Facebook questions is talking about how bears can smell food on your person. Um, it's okay to hike with food on your person as you're out in the wildlife in the backcountry, um, but should you put that food inside of a bear-safe container in your backpack while you're hiking? Well, it depends. Like, if you're backpacking, you should have most, if not all of your food within your BRFC or bear resistant food container. Um, and then as far as just, you know, day hiking, things like that, people walk around quite often with just random amounts of food in their backpack or on their person. The thing is, is if you do have this and you are walking around in the back country or even in the front country, just don't drop like the food, the like the trash or even the pack that contains it. Um, Cause sometimes when people have backpacks, like they're like, Oh, I'll just, set this down in the barrel, check it out. Uh, and yes, they will come up and investigate it and then they might want to come investigate you or someone else after that. Uh, setting it down will actually, bear that might have walked away will now just be curious. Okay, so it's all right to have food upon your person as you're hiking around, but definitely if you're camping, you do want to use that bear resistant food container to make sure that bears don't get any rewards by coming and examining all of your campsite and all of the wonderful things you have there. Um, one of the other questions that we've received from our Facebook page talks about what you should do um, if a bear is following you along the way. So if you're going for a hike and you're that safe 300 yards away from a bear, um, but you do see a bear from a distance and you're hiking along and the bear follows you along your hike from about 300 yards away, what should you do to um, make that bear kind of go away? Okay, so if it's still 300 yards away, you can keep trying to hike in a different direction or trying to take a different route. But if it's still following you um, and you have taken this other route and it's still coming in direction, that's when you should stop and be trying to chase or scare it away, like you know, being aggressive, yelling at it a lot. Like uh, if it does actually get up close to you, maybe even taking a step forward and like kind of kicking at the ground, being like, hey bear, get out of here, just really yelling and trying to drive it off. Like more than a lot of people when they're hiking, they'll they hear about, oh, you're supposed to yell, hey bear. Like when you're trying to be aggressive, like you actually want to be aggressive and yelling like you would trying to like, like, I mean, if you are scared in that situation, which a lot of people will be, uh, is just, you know, kind of channel that into like, like, I do not want you around here. I want you to go away. Like just trying to drive it off. Like just being loud, trying to move it away. So bears are amazing animals we have here in Denali. They have a wonderful sense of smell. They're very curious about people and all that they present. But we can definitely try to make sure that they stay away from us as we're walking through the backcountry. Because number one, we want our animals to stay wild here in Denali National Park. Of course, besides bears, there are many other animals that are here as well. And one of our Facebook questions addresses that. Um, they're asking how likely it is to see wolves as, along the park road as you're exploring. I don't know what the chances are this year. Um... But I know 2011, I believe, was the greatest chance that we had from the park bus. People were seeing it about 45% of the time they're seeing a wolf. Uh, for about a month, it was pretty slow, like only maybe 10 people uh, in the entirety of the visitation to the park, like every three or four days we're seeing one. And now it seems like every other day some people are seeing wolves out in certain locations. Just depends on how active they are, how close their dens are to the road, um, what areas they're using to get from their dens to other areas for hunting. Yeah. I've been hearing from visitors myself that they've been seeing wolves out in the area. I get very jealous. I haven't seen one yet personally, but hopefully since they've seemed very active this summer, um, I'll have a chance to see one soon. Now, 2011 was the most common year to see them along the park road, but it's decreased since then. Mm -hmm. Why do you suppose the sighting ratio has decreased for our wolves in the park? Well, there's, I mean, there's so many reasons that go into all the things that are biological questions, but with this, you have wolves that, in some cases, some of the packs have uh, like split up and gone different directions. We had a pack that was actually right here at the front of the park that's uh, moved outside of the park and uh, has actually spent a couple of years still around, but it's just hasn't been in the park enough now that we've actually dropped our numbers because of that. Um, and then the snowshoe hare population crashed in 2010, and since then is, sta well, 2009 was the peak, 2010 was the crash, and since then has stayed fairly low, and so that's had a cascade effect into the, all the other wildlife. I mean, it's affecting, you know, of course, the prey numbers like ptarmigan, grouse, uh, ground squirrels, things of those nature, and then how that affects everything else through the run.
All right. So we're coming into the end of our program here, but we have two quick questions I would like to um, encounter before we head out. First off, I just received a question asking, what should you do if you encounter a wolf? So if you have one of those rare sightings of wolves in the park, uh -huh. how should you interact with it? Uh, I mean, just watch it from uh, a relative distance. You need to keep at least 25 yards from them. But if they are approaching you, as I was saying earlier, treat it like a large, aggressive dog. You just want to try and be driving it off. Uh, if it is coming close to you, like pick up, you know, even small rocks or something to throw in its direction or actually be hitting it. Uh, be aware, like once it starts getting bigger than golf ball size, like you could put enough force to potentially damage, injure, or kill the animal. Uh, but if it's you versus the wolf, like you have to be able to take care of yourself. All right. Um, do you want to? Okay. So we have one. Yeah. Okay, we have one more question. So sorry, we're trying to figure out where to keep on going. We're meeting our 15-minute mark here. Um, we have one more question that we're going to try and discuss here, kind of going back to the bears that we're talking about earlier. So this question is talking about we've discussed um, our bear spray to bring with you and mm. how to use if you do use firearms in the area. Um, how about air horns? There's a question discussing air horns for bear encounters and if they're useful, um, if they're not, if they're like bear bells and probably should just be put to the wayside. What are air horns used for? So here in this park, uh, they tend to not be extremely effective. Actually, they're not effective generally very often because here we have the air brakes from the buses, the horns from various vehicles that they're encountering, and especially early in the season. And so anytime those bears encounter that, when they encounter an air horn, it's less likely a chance to work on them. Same thing if someone else in the back country or in the front country were to try and get them with an air horn, you get one, maybe two uses before they just start ignoring it. All right. Um, I'm going to check our Facebook page one more time real quick to see if we have any other questions. Um, as I'm doing this, do you have any amazing encounters that kind of demonstrate the wonderful, <laughs> awesome, um, awe-inspiring experiences you can have out in the wildlife of Denali? We have this wonderful wilderness, and what experiences with animals do you have while you're out there? Well, for me, a uh, really rare opportunity was to be able to see a wolverine bounding across um, uh, out near polychrome for myself, but a lot of people see them out towards Anderson Pass, but it's not an animal you get to see out in the wild too often, so that was exciting. Um, but for those of you that are watching and listening, uh, we <laughs> have kind of had to rush through some of this stuff, so if it seems a little rushed, we apologize. Um, but for me, like I'm used to giving a lot longer programs, giving very detailed information about this stuff. So if you have further questions, feel free to contact uh, or leave some messages on the Facebook page again or go to uh, the Denali Park website and then leave any questions through there and it'll get back to me and I'll try to answer those as best I can. Um, this afternoon, this weekend, and any times throughout the summer you have any questions. So. Absolutely. Um, on our, on our web page that we have for our national park, if you go to www.nps.gov slash D-E-N-A, um, going to that web page, you will find a section that says contact me, and you'll find our email right there. You can please feel free to email us any questions you may have um, dealing with any wildlife encounters. You can, we'll send them right to Matt here, and he can answer all questions that you may have. Um, I don't see any more questions on our Facebook page, so I want to thank you all so much for joining us today for this Denali event. Um, let us know if you're enjoying these wonderful live stream events that we're having, and I hope that you have a wonderful day. Our next one will actually be tomorrow at 5 o'clock Alaska time, and that will be talking with one of our artists and residents who've worked here inside the park, capturing the beauty of this wildlife. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful evening, um, and come by again. Bye.